In this next video, we're going to look at the pinned face workflow within T-splines. And to begin, I'm going to just select the gem loader and place a big colored gem out on screen. And then I'm going to rotate that. If I double click this rotate manipulator, I can enter a value in degrees into the command line rotate a set distance. And what we're going to do is move that, so grab our gemstone, switch to the move manipulator, and we're going to move that up straight above the construction plane. Next we're going to begin creating a pendant shape. So I'm going to start within T-splines and use the pinned face workflow. And we're going to just create, hold the Alt key to turn off my snaps temporarily. I'm just going to create a square. When I get close enough to the end, it should close up. Oh, let's turn off our gemstone. So I didn't get close enough. You can see that it didn't do a good job there. So I need to do that over again. It's real important that you get that first one closed properly. Click, click click and then all the way to the end click and that one I could tell you know had position continuity and closed properly now for this one or for this example I'm going to grab go into edge mode and that's the S hot key and grab this edge kind of move it back slightly then what we're going to do is we're going to do a double row so holding the extrude or holding the alt key we're going to extrude that face out so we're doing a double row of faces and then we're going to grab these two edges and do the same thing holding the Alt key by extruding the next series of faces down. Rotate those faces into place. Back to move. Hold ex Alt key to extrude. And it's just a series. You're kind of doing the same thing over and over again, but E is the hot key for rotate. So we'll rotate those faces. W is the hot key for uh, move, holding the Alt key down will extrude and move. So I'm just making copies of these as I go and rotating the orientation so it's kind of perpendicular to the surface. And we're going to do this until we create our pendant shape. E, rotate, W, alt and drag. E to rotate, W, alt and drag. Again, E, W to alt and drag. When I get to about this point, I'm actually going to go into um, verts mode here and make some changes. So I'm going to actually toggle into verts mode, which I can do through the HUD, or I can click A as the hot key for the manipulator. And we're going to actually just thin out this section here, grab our edges, so S is edge mode. And then Alt and drag. And then back into verts mode. And grab this vert and drag it out to start widening it back out. S for edge mode. Alt and drag. A, grab a vert, stretch it out slightly. S for edge mode, alt and drag, and then A to stretch that out again. And when you're happy with the overall shape, I'm going to come in and give it a soft bow at the top and maybe a soft edge down here at the, the bottom too. Okay, next up we're actually going to give this thing thickness because if you look at it, it's just flat. It's just a flat uh, surface. So to give it thickness, we're going to use the same extrude function, 
while in face mode, grab our entire series of faces so everything's highlighted, and we're going to hold Alt down and drag, and you'll see it starting to create some thickness as it goes up. There's two ways to do this. Using extrude actually leave, leaves the back of it open. Okay, If we leave the back of it open, we can now run the thicken command. So we could come in and we could save on metal weight by running the thicken command, telling it the whole object, and choosing this item to thicken, pressing enter, and as you drag away from the point in the center, you're either thickening to the inside or the outside. You do need to make sure that you're not uh, overlapping here. But you can see that it just created a nice edge there. Okay. Your alternative to that method will back up and undo all the way to where it's just this flat edge. Okay, the alternative would be to just run the thicken command instead of the extrude command and thicken this object straight up. And that's going to create a solid object as opposed to a hollowed object. So depending on, you know, is this a high-end piece or a um, more economical piece, do you want it to be solid or do you want it to be hollow throughout, you can choose either uh, thicken or or extrude with thicken. And from here it's just artistic license. So if you wanted to, you could come in and you could grab a series of faces here. And I did that by holding the shift key down. It selected the whole edge loop. And I'm going to unselect the ones that I don't want. And we'll just move that series down. And we'll move this series up. If I wanted to, I could grab this edge loop. I can get it there. And then we'll grab just, you know, part of it. All right, whenever you double click and it doesn't select the whole edge loop, you can always use the hot key for it or the HUD loop select. And then if you hold control, you can deselect what you don't want. And I'm going to deselect some of this stuff. And then I'm going to run the crease command on that section to create a harder edge. Okay, so just to get a different look to it. Now if I want to add a spot for a bale, I can do so. I'm going to begin by uh, inserting an edge. Simple on both sides, right about there. And we'll do the same thing on this side, on this edge loop. And again, and then we'll bridge through the middle of this item, picking two good faces to bridge through. So we'll grab the face right here and a face right here and run the bridge command. to create a hole for our chain to pass through. Okay, and that's
that's all there is to it to create this uh, append face workflow.